Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Thank you for joining me for the Trumpet of Truth podcast. My name is Brother Greg Bray. I'm the pastor of Lighthouse Baptist Church in Bruce, Mississippi. Hey, neighbor. It sure is good to have you with me on the podcast today. I welcome you to the Trumpet of Truth podcast. Looking forward to what God has for us today. I just want to remind you that you can listen on several podcast platforms. Just choose your favorite one and do a search for Trumpet of Truth. You may have to put Greg Bray after it or something, but just do a search for Trumpet of Truth on your favorite, whether it's Google, Apple, Spotify, all of those you can find the podcast on. And then I'd like to ask you to subscribe or follow, whichever one it asks you to do, and then uh, give me a thumbs up on YouTube, make a comment. I get those comments, and I appreciate those comments. I look to have some comments about these podcasts that we're doing right now. We're talking about evolution and, and the Genesis record of creation. I look forward to hearing from you. Let me say something before we get started today. Uh, Several of us on the podcast, the ones that give testimony and some thoughts on the podcast, we state our opinions. All of us try to base our opinions on what the Bible says. So if we're telling you what the Bible says, let me tell you what my pastor said when I was coming up in church. Brother Rob Pelkey made this statement. He said, don't get mad at the mailman. We're just delivering the mail. We're telling you what God said. So we're doing our best to do that. I thank you for listening and praise God that we can look at what the Bible says about some of these controversial doctrines. I'm so glad that God teaches us in the Bible what we should believe. Let's get into the podcast. Last week, I gave you a short introduction of what we were going to talk about in the next few weeks. We talked about uh, seven doctrines in these in two verses in Matthew chapter 19. I want to read to you more than two verses. Matthew chapter 19, verses 3 through 6 says, The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. This is the important phrase. What therefore God hath joined together, Let not man put asunder. Verses 4 and 5 are the ones that we are focusing in on. Uh, Verse 4 says, And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Now here's what we're doing. We're stating the thoughts that Jesus had about creation, first of all. If you don't have creation down pat, then you've got a problem. Uh, He said, have you not heard, or excuse me, have you not read that he which made them, made them? And what we're starting out with, actually three different things here. let Let me give you the seven thoughts or the seven teachings in these two verses. The Genesis Genesis record of creation is true. Man did not evolve from lower creatures. There were not millions of years of pre-human history. There is no gender confusion with God. Marriage is defined as a union between a man and a woman. The family unit is composed of a father and mother and their offspring. 
And number seven, marriage results in a new and independent family unit. So I want to take the first three. Here's the thought. And what it becomes is a thought of evolution. Uh, uh, But we start out by talking about the Genesis record of creation is true. Man did not evolve from lower creatures, and there were not millions of years of pre-human history. So that's the thought that we're looking at today. We, we're kind of com- compiling those three different thoughts into one thought. And the question that's asked is evolution, the way it, it's taught in our schools, the way it's taught worldly today, and for the past many, 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 many years, is it true? Well, not according to the Bible, and that's what we're trying to state. We're, again, we're giving you opinions based on the scriptures and why we believe what we believe. I've asked these questions to several different men, and I got a response from about two of those men. That's probably about all we would have time for. We, I mean, we could take a long, long time talking about this, and I hope in the days to come to have a response from some of the other men on this, and then maybe us talk a little bit more with a couple of others lengthily about it. But, uh, you know, as as Brother John Carl Lancaster stated, you can argue and argue and not get anywhere. Listen to what he had to say, and, and this, that's exactly what he had to say, and I want you to hear that. Uh, Just to prove that I'm not the only one that thinks that, he thinks it too, and others think it too. You can't argue about the Bible and what it says. You you just read the Bible, study the Bible, see what it has to say to you, and believe it. I've thought about it, and uh, really I don't have a whole lot to say about it. Um, You could argue to your blue in the face and really not accomplish anything. Sometimes I struggle on how to put all of this together, but everybody seems to enjoy how that I go back and forth between those that have been interviewed. So now I'm going to let you hear what Brother Isaac Lancaster had to say about it. Brother Greg, those are extremely difficult subjects. And what makes them so difficult is because evolution or creation, you could even throw atheism in there, which ties into evolution. All three, if you believe it or not, are uh, faith, based on a faith of a principle. And really, there's only two principles in the world. And it's really been this way since the beginning of time. There is the principle that God is real, and there is the principle that God is not real. And so those two faiths, have pretty much always been the religion of the world uh, since since the garden. Men have always be- either believed that God is true or that God is not true. And so a few scriptures that I think will help us with this, which the thing with scripture is you have to believe it, and that's part of faith. And see, for me, I have believed in Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, and I know him personally, so... It's hard to not believe in somebody that you know and talk to. And so, therefore, I believe in creation because I know the Creator. And that's one of the things that we need to talk about. So, I'm going to read a few things. First, in Psalms 119, verse 160, it says, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. So in this verse, he's letting us know, the psalmist is letting us know that God is true, that he did not lie to us, that the first 11 books of Genesis is true, that God did create the world, and he did make everything that we see, and that there was a fall of man, and this world was cursed. And so a lot of people, a lot of times they justify evolution because they say, you know, God could not have made a world this corrupt. And there might be some truth to that because God did not make a world full of corruption. 
God made a perfect world and man corrupted it. And so in Romans 3, 4, it says, let God be true, but every man a liar. And see, uh, that's again, that's back to faith. We believe that God is true. And so uh, that's why we don't believe in evolution. I know there's some uh, so-called Christians that do try to say that evolution is true and that they weren't um, six literal days that God made the world, that they were actually millions of years between there. And we just don't believe that because we believe God. What stood out to me of these two men's testimonies that are testifying today about their beliefs and their thoughts is, like Brother John Carl's fixing to say, is that it's just that. It's what we believe. I believe God. I've also heard people say that it takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe that there is a creator, almighty God. But the truth is, what it boils down to, I believe, is just that, what I believe. I believe creation is right. I believe God made everything in six days and rested on the seventh. But why do I believe that? It's because of the Bible. It tells me that. And I believe the Bible. But I believe that the Bible is God's word. And I believe that every word, every jot, every tittle in the King James Version Bible is God's holy word. And I believe everything that it says. And it said that in the beginning, God created. So I believe that God, who is my Savior, hallelujah, created it all. We also have in 1 John 5, 20, it says, And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. There again, he's true. He is the truth. And we are in him that is true. Those of us that have accepted him and have been saved, even in his son, Jesus Christ. So, so we have accepted Jesus Christ as our savior. Therefore, we know he's true. This is the true God and eternal life. And so there is a life after death. That's something else that evolution tries to deny. And the reason they try to deny that is because, in, in many cases, because uh, they, would, they would rather just not exist and have to face a righteous, all-powerful, almighty God. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, that means that there is no controversy on this subject says, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus did come, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, and believed on in the world, received up into glory. And so these beliefs that God, there's only one true God, and that he created the world in six literal days, and then on the seventh rested, those are beliefs that we have faith in because we know him and we know that he is true. And I've heard debates between creationists and evolutionists and it seemed like there was no gain on either side. It really, I guess, just boils down to what you believe. There's proof through the Bible that God created the heavens and the earth and all that was in existence. But it's proof to me because I believe it. I believe the Bible and I believe that uh, God is not a liar. Everything that God says is right and he said that he created it all. So I believe God, I believe the Bible and I believe in a creation that was created by a creator. Let God show you what you should believe. Brother Isaac's going to say something about that, and I appreciate what he says about it. He talks about the King James Bible. He talks about asking God to show us what we need to believe. But let me say this. You will not find out what God has to say apart from God's word. What 
what somebody says is their word, and God had a word to say about it, and he wants us to believe what he said. So listen to this. And so, friend, if you're listening to this podcast, these are hard questions, and only you can decide what you believe. The best thing to do is to read the Bible. That is the best thing that you can do is read the Bible and then pray and ask the Lord to show you the truth. The King James Bible is what we're talking about because if a God can make the world, and he did, if our God made the world, how easy would it be for him to preserve the word that he wanted his people and everybody to read? And so we believe that the King James Bible is the absolute true account for the English-speaking people of how God made the world. Brother Isaac's going to read from John chapter 1, the gospel of John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1, to help close this podcast out. And it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And that pretty much sums it up, that we believe that our God created the world by speaking it into existence. And so, friend, uh, I hope that this has been an encouragement to you. We appreciate Brother Greg Bray and the Trumpet of Truth podcast. And we hope that if you are wondering or struggling with these hard, hard thoughts, and we know they are hard, that the Lord will reveal unto your heart the truth. And that's what's so wonderful about being a Christian is that we can talk to the one who was there. He's the only one who was witness to creation because he was the one creating it all. And uh, evolutionists, they weren't there. Uh, Christians, we weren't there, but we know the one that was. And so thank you for listening to this podcast. I'll turn it back over to Brother Greg. I want to say thank you to these two men, John Carl Lancaster and Isaac Lancaster, for stating what the Word of God says about the creation of man, about the creation of the world. And there's a lot of other things to talk about. We, I don't know how much we'll talk about, but I'm looking forward to doing it. It's going to be controversial to a lot of people, but it's not controversial to me because God said it, and I believe it, and I'm not going to say that settles it. I will say this, that God said it. That settles it whether I believe it or not. You can email me at trumpetoftruth85 at gmail.com. Please comment on YouTube. Give me a thumbs up on the YouTube channel. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel. All of these things help us. We'll see you later.